Video games come and go, with few ever leaving a lasting impression. Even great games wash away under the endless stream of new releases, an unfortunate fate that seems to have befallen Owlboy, an indie gem from 2016 known for its roughly decade-long development, as D-Pad Studio worked hard to measure up to the lofty pixel art style they promised. But was it worth the extra effort? Does Owlboy deserve to be remembered? In a world of floating islands, the peaceful village of Veli is invaded by sky pirates led by Molstrom, who, with the help of a hooded figure, seeks three powerful relics capable of destroying the islands, with the first catastrophe taking the capital city of Advent. It's up to Otis and his growing band of misfits to thwart the pirate's plan by securing the relics before it's too late. The quest takes them through the ruins of an ancient owl civilization, the tangled woods of the floating continent, pirate strongholds, and finally to space, where they confront the mysterious figure revealed to be their friend Solus, who intends to use the relics to reform the world in order to save it, which, after a battle of misunderstandings, comes to fruition in a bittersweet ending. Amid the standard fantasy elements driving the plot, it's the interpersonal struggles that give the story its heart, carrying heavy topics like bullying, the weight of expectations and failure, death, loyalty, and most of all, friendship. The obvious crown jewel of Owlboy are the graphics, featuring the most beautifully detailed pixel art I've ever seen, elevated by great animation breathing life into its characters and environments like few pixelated games do, and aided by a lovely soundtrack. Nearly everyone, no matter their significance, has individual designs and personalities. Much of the map is interconnected, and there's even day and night cycles in the hub areas. The game makes special effort to give grounded explanations and attention to typically ignored video game tropes and mechanics like how the silent protagonist Otis is a literal mute, or a teleportation device used to summon allies being created by a technologically advanced society. All these things help the world of Owlboy feel real and organic. It's the kind of polish I would expect from a Nintendo game, which is a big compliment. However, this professionalism doesn't make Owlboy impervious, as there are some notable blemishes. The fixed camera angles and screen shifts can lead to unfair damage as players get blindsided by hazards just out of sight. The screen shake effect is way too prevalent and excessive, making it hard to appreciate certain visuals and moments. And after long play sessions, this focus jerking can be headache-inducing. Depending on the version, there are a handful of bugs. The ones I encountered on Switch were miscalculations of my collectibles, a glitch during a boss fight forcing me to reset, and missing animation turning a few scenes awkward. Gameplay consists of combat, exploration, stealth, puzzles, and platforming. Otis can fly, grab, and spin by default, with additional abilities coming from his three companions, best friend Getty, who wields a basic pistol, former pirate Alphonse and his fiery blunderbuss, and troublemaker Twig with his webs and grappling capabilities. These buddies are nice and distinct, though Getty does get outshined by the other shooters, demonstrated when his absence after recruiting Twig proves pretty inconsequential, which is both a story and gameplay shortcoming. Regardless, the levels and enemies are excellently designed around the party gadgetry, and no one feels useless for too long. While there could have been a smidge more variety in the common enemy department, boss fights are consistently great with unique designs, music, and attack patterns. Fruit replenishes health, and a fuller health bar increases speed, which is a neat extra reason to avoid damage. Unfortunately, few areas allow for this fast movement, with most demanding patience to avoid detection or gingerly maneuvering through dark or cramped mazes, and this relentless stop-and-go forces a less kinetic pace than I would like, not to mention the incentive to slowly and methodically explore environments for hidden treasure. More on that later. Another inconvenience is the controls. Flying is split between two buttons, an initial jump and a dash. With how much more common and useful it is, I instinctively try using the dash input for takeoff both grounded and airborne, so requiring a separate button just to get off the ground feels unnatural. It'd sort of be like if Kirby's float ability was mapped to a different button. And with flight being a major component, I expect a little more streamlined access to it. Perhaps if the dash could initiate hovering no matter Otis's orientation. On keyboard, inputting up jumps automatically, and I wish this option applied to controllers as well, similar to Smash Bros. There's also extensive use of all bumpers and triggers for different actions, which gets slightly confusing when switching between companions. Even after multiple playthroughs, I find myself fumbling over which buttons do what, making chaotic moments more stressful than they should be, worsened by how taking damage violently flings Otis around as players struggle to regain control. The Bogwins Cannon minigame really exemplifies Owlboy's reoccurring issues, with restricted screen movement 
movement limiting visibility of the way ahead, overtuned acceleration ruining control and reaction time, and frankly subpar level design considering the mechanics at work. The strangest aspect is the game's structure, which has to be the most haphazard metroidvania I've played. The smooth way the adventure transitions between set pieces suggests one big connected world, yet many areas are permanently inaccessible afterwards. There are odd instances where something seems missing, like in large empty rooms, extended moments without music pushing the dramatic silence a bit too far, and entire levels devoid of buccanary coins, Alboy's common collectible. Because there are a finite amount of these coins, it makes sense not to place them in sections that can't be returned to, ensuring that nothing can be missed through progression. But when players are conditioned to expect rewards for exploration early on, suddenly not having that incentive creates a weird inconsistency. Most areas are linear dungeons and really only designed to be traversed once, so having to retread through them for collectibles is incredibly unnatural, a process that involves hugging walls in search of nooks and crannies behind fake barriers and such, which gets old when striving for 100%. The map is just big enough that the prospect of scouring everywhere for the last collectibles without fast travel tempts me to save myself the trouble by looking up their locations. This also includes three secret tokens granting access to the Eternal Sanctuary, where holograms of ancient owls give a history lesson for those who care about world building. Personally, I find more satisfaction in the Spectre Cloak earned from buying out Buccaneary Shop. For a game classified as story-driven, I'm pleasantly surprised how well Owlboy balances story and gameplay, though some sections do come across as unnecessary to play. Mesos is mainly a thin excuse to develop Twig and his family relations as players go back and forth with minimal danger, the aftermath of Advent overindulges in the character's grief before continuing the game, being teleported away from the floating continent to pull a couple levers in Tropos is a random intermission, and the floating tower's library is too tame of a challenge to be placed near the endgame. I do however like how the campaign periodically circles around to Tropos so players can rest and take advantage of Buccaneary's upgrades. Owlboy is a reflection of everything the team went through making it, which is to say a series of ups and downs. The adventure is a visual splendor from start to finish, with breathtaking vistas, lush greenery, and inspiring enemy and character work. It is the game that taught me to appreciate pixel art. Beyond the set dressing, however, I'm left with a sense of longing when observing the entire package. From the control and structural oddities, to the less desirable gameplay segments, I dread more things than I look forward to with every revisit, yet still come out believing the game deserves credit for its successes, and doesn't belong lost to the waves. Is Owlboy worth remembering? Well, I do. It's a conflicted, wistful fondness, but a fondness nonetheless. Every thematic element hits close to home, in both comforting and upsetting ways. So regardless of any mainstream recognition, I'll remain in admiration of this humble diamond.